Welcome folks um, to our briefing on trade related job loss in Washington State. Uh, I am Hillary Hayden. I'm the executive director at the Washington Fair Trade Coalition. Um, I, yeah, I, my last name is spelled H-A-D-E-N. I think it should be on the screen. Um, our coalition is a statewide coalition of labor, environment, family farm, and other community groups that are working together to improve U.S. trade policy. Um, hold on, I want to make sure that our speaker view is doing the right thing. Okay. Um, awesome. So I'll uh, go ahead and moderate today's event. We're going to start with a brief overview of our report's findings, and then I'll turn it over to Jake Ackley, who is the president of the Association of Western Pulp and Paper Workers, Local 422, uh, and Larry Brown, who's the president of the Washington State Labor Council. They will dig into what the numbers in our report mean to Washington's working families and communities in real terms. After they both had a chance to speak, we will open it up to your questions. Um, just a note on Q&A, if you have a question, go ahead and type the word question in the chat and I will unmute you so you can ask your question. So for our report, uh, we reviewed data from the federal government's Trade Adjustment Assistance Program, which is also known by the acronym TAA. TAA provides extended unemployment benefits to a subset of workers that the US Department of Labor has certified as lost, having lost their jobs to offshoring um, or from displacement by imports. The labor department data is more reliable than most job loss and job creation numbers because it provides an actual count of actual jobs lost at work sites rather than relying on economic modeling to come up with an estimate. So all that said, um, the TAA data significantly undercounts the total number of trade related job losses, both because the program only covers certain types of jobs and because someone needs to proactively complete a detailed application um, for displaced workers to get that TA assistance. So even with that in mind, uh, the Washington TA numbers are particularly concerning. I think the most troubling trend uncovered in our analysis is that trade related job loss is on the rise in Washington in recent years. Uh, Washington experienced a 133% increase in trade related job loss over the last three years in comparison to the three years prior. Uh, with 10,323 job losses certified for TAA petitions filed between 2017 and 2019, compared to 7,780 between 2014 and 2016. Also a little bit surprising is that uh, while Washington is ranked 13th largest by population, um, our analysis revealed that Washington is fifth highest um, in states across the country for trade-related job loss when measured by population. The increase in job loss has been felt throughout the state and in a variety of industries. Um, cities and towns with more than 100 trade-related layoffs in the last three years include Arlington, Auburn, Bellingham, Camas, Everett, Kirkland, Longview, Medellin Falls, Moses Lake, Port Angeles, Redmond, Renton, Republic, Seattle, Spokane, Sumner, Sunnyside, Tequila, and Vancouver. The growing number of trade-related layoffs in Washington over the last three years is particularly remarkable for coming during a period when government officials say they're taking action to balance international trade and protect American jobs. Uh, the U.S. trade deficit in goods has actually increased in recent years, reaching over $852 billion in 2019, according to data from the U.S. Census Bureau. And while Washington is one of the rare states in the country with a trade surplus in goods, um, it experienced a 56% drop in its cumulative surplus between 2017 and 2019 compared to the three prior years. If Washington is going to stop hemorrhaging jobs overseas week after week and year after year, we need our federal officials to stop adopting pro-offshoring policies like the U.S.-China trade deal. Uh, and we need to get more serious about prioritizing the needs of working families in our trade negotiations. Those sound like common sense measures, but we actually have a long way to go on both of them. To describe what Washington's trade-related job loss means in real terms, I want to first turn it over to Jake Ackley, the president of the Association of Western Pulp and Paper Workers, Local 422. Go ahead, Jake. Hello, my name is Jake, and uh, I, we were just laid off. Uh, Ponderay Newsprint has had about 180 workers uh, about 75 of them were unionized, 
but nonetheless, uh, we're owned by four entities, uh, Resolute Forest Products, which is a Canadian owned company and three other partners um, until, well, this year. And uh, what happened was uh, Resolute wanted more money to manage Ponderay. Ponderay said they'd do it themselves. Uh, and we did that. And then early in 2020, one of the other partners that had the 60% majority filed bankruptcy early on. They're in giving their shares to the three remaining partners, giving Resolute control, manage, uh, percentage control of the company. And then sometime around February, they started, they just pulled all the orders out of the Ponderay mill. Um, hence to say we were make, we, it was about a 60% reduction in what we were making before. Uh, but before all that happened for a couple, for quite a few years, we had been taking downtime or slowing down our machine to, so that they could drive up Resolute could drive up the price of newsprint per ton. And then as soon as they got it drive up, they fire us back up to max production and away they'd go. Um, it's, it's a long story, but that's, I mean, they've kind of controlled everything. And by pulling the tons, the other two partners that were left couldn't maintain and Ponderay couldn't maintain. And they gave us about two days notice. And I mean, that's pretty much, I mean, that's just the short, short version of what happened to us. But definitely it was a uh, way they they ran the market and what they did with Ponderay because it was being owned by four different entities, which was, it, without getting into the long story, it's, that's the way it was for us. I mean, so. Yeah, and I think I it's don't like, know, you know, unless. Yeah, thank you so much, Jake. I think it's really important to note too, um, that the pulp and paper industry has been hit particularly hard um, by trade policy in terms of the data that we're representing in this report, um, the pulp and paper workers have actually had 100% of their Trade Adjustment Act um, petitions approved over the last 20 years. Um, so I think it's just, it just goes to show like how hard they have been hit by trade. Um, next to talk about the impact to our communities from trade related job loss, I'm gonna invite Larry Brown, the president of the Washington State Labor Council to speak. Go ahead, Larry. Well, thank you, Hillary, and uh, thanks to Jake for being here as well. Again, my name is Larry Brown. I'm president of the Washington State Labor Council, AFL-CIO. Uh, we represent over 600 local unions across the state and over 550,000 uh, union members working in every sector of our economy here in Washington. The um, job losses that Hillary talks about in the last three years is part of a long-term trend. Uh, and I've experienced uh, that personally. Uh, I hired in at Boeing uh, in 1979 and held in numerous jobs until the early 80s when I got laid off in one of the uh, uh, seems like endless layoffs that occur at Boeing over the years. Uh, now, Boeing has also had a number of Trade Adjustment Act uh, petitions filed all successfully. And the reason that those are successfully filed is because workers are losing their jobs due to offshoring of work. Uh, working in the aerospace industry, manufacturing uh, commercial airliners, uh, you know, it's obvious that the international trade is an important feature uh, because we are selling these planes all over the world. Uh, but in fact, it's not just airplanes that are on the uh, chopping block or on the sales docket. It's also people's jobs. Uh, 
Uh, very often, uh, large sales are made to national airlines uh, of foreign companies, of, of excuse me, foreign countries. Uh, and along with those sales are guaranteed work packages that get shipped out of the Boeing factories overseas to be taken over by foreign workers. Oftentimes, those foreign workers are paid uh, substandard wages in the environment of very poor labor standards, labor laws protecting these workers. And uh, it gives an economic advantage to the companies to do that sort of thing. Um, the practice continues to this day. Manufacturing in the, U in the US um, also is incentivized uh, uh, to offshore the work uh, because of these low wages and poor labor practices. Um, there is a corrosive long-term impact by this practice. Uh, eventually, we lose not only jobs, but we lose the capacity and the ability uh, to perform these manufacturing functions. A recent example of this uh, destructive outcome is right here in Ferndale, in Washington, uh, where the Intalco Works Alcoa Smelter has just announced closure uh, of the last remaining aluminum smelter here in Washington State. We used to have, I think, about a dozen aluminum smelters in Washington State. It should be a great place to make aluminum because we have relatively cheap hydropower. And not only is that power cheap, but it's clean. And so uh, now that we no longer have the capacity to make aluminum here in Washington State, uh, and by the way, we build airplanes with a lot of aluminum in it, uh, that aluminum will be replaced uh, most likely by cheap, dirty Chinese aluminum. So there we have the impact of uh, international uh, trade imports coming to America, displacing American workers. Uh, this development is not only not good for American workers, it is not good for our communities. It is bad for our trade deficit that Hillary talked about. And in the case of aluminum, it's not good for the environment. So as we struggle to uh, make ourselves uh, cleaner uh, in terms of our carbon footprint, uh, we are competing against much dirtier technologies all too often in these foreign uh, venues for manufacturing. So uh, I appreciate the work that uh, Hillary is doing and uh, uh, I guess I'll conclude my comments. Awesome, thank you so much, Larry. Um, I think that was a really useful background in some of what the aerospace industry is dealing with right now. Um, so before I open it up to questions, I wanna just say uh, the reason for Washington's trade related in trade related, the increase in trade related job losses likely vary from town to town and industry to industry. Um, but before things get better, we actually need our federal government to stop making things worse. Um, not only have federal officials failed to rectify the underlying causes of our country's long term trade imbalances, but actions that they've taken in recent years um, have actually actively promoted offshoring. I want to cite just two examples. Um, first, the 2017 tax law incentivizes the offshoring of Washington manufacturing jobs. Uh, one of the many ways the so-called Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017 reduced taxes for big corporations was by creating a significantly lower tax rate for firms that move production from the U.S. to other countries. Under that new tax law, if a U.S. company paid a 21% federal corporate tax rate on profits um, from goods made in Washington state, their income earned offshore would be taxed at only a 10.5% rate. That's a major incentive for corporations to move their production abroad. Um, another example is the recent U.S.-China trade deal that makes it safer for big corporations to offshore Washington's jobs. Large sections of that so-called Phase 1 China trade deal signed in January were about making relocation of jobs to China safer for big employers. Neglecting to mention or address abysmal uh, labor standards, forced labor, weak environmental standards, and related causes of job offshoring to China, the top bullets of the U.S. trade reps fact sheet on the deal 
were about protecting intellectual property and stopping technology transfer, which were items that large corporations demanded um, in order to feel even safer moving their production uh, to China. To end that trade-related job loss in Washington, the federal government needs to stop adopting these pro-offshoring measures, and then it needs to get serious about putting the, the interests of working families at the center of our trade negotiations. We should protect the existing jobs in Washington, build new markets for Washington goods and services, and lift wages at home and abroad with trade policies that mandate strong internationally recognized labor and environmental standards, um, and have enforcement mechanisms. We should explicitly allow for joint labor activities across borders, including collective bargaining, and we should be a lot more serious about enforcing bans on enforced labor. We should also support the creation of new jobs and industries with trade policies that explicitly allow for public procurement, tariff investment, and other industrial policies. The growing trade-related job loss in Washington is not inevitable, but it's not going to change unless our trade policy changes. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and open it up um, to folks' questions. Like I said, if you have a question, go ahead and type the word question in the chat, um, and I will unmute folks who have questions um, to ask. Awesome. So folks don't have questions. I think we will go ahead and wrap it up here. Um, thank you all so much for being here and I will go ahead and send out um, the report to all of you uh, this morning. Thanks so much everyone. Thanks Jake and Larry for being here. Have a good one.